So the, the first one is, what do you think about the large number of different cryptocurrencies? Do you think it helps or harms the take up of, of crypto? I think it really depends in, in kind of our opinion. There as I think it's 10,000 tokens or coins or whatever you'd like to call them. Mm. We really believe that, and I, you know, you'd be bored of me saying this, but you have to fix a real world problem. You know, if you are just, um, you know, creating a solution to a problem that doesn't exist, there's no real world utility. You know, it is purely then as a market speculation or a personal gain kind of environment. And that's just not where we are. Um, and that's not really our goals. I think that the, all these meme coins kind of coming out, they are fun. But it does detract away from actually cryptocurrency was designed to bank the unbanked and actually help people. And I think due to the huge mass of cryptocurrencies, we've lost, the sector slightly lost its way in what its purpose is and why we're here and what the huge global potential of cryptocurrency can do to change an individual's lives. Colin, do you have anything to add? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in in my mind, I, I'm fairly certain in my opinion on it, I think it's been a negative thing. I, I think it is a matter of spreading the resources that are out there that are, you know, capable and interested in creating these things and it's it spread them across thousands of coins um, uh, that are out there. So it, it, it makes it hard. I, I think that as time goes on, the number will decrease, but um, that remains to be seen. It hasn't happened yet. I thought I would do it years ago, but I was clearly wrong about that. So every year, yeah. we uh, we expect it to happen, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't. <laughs> but we'll Just as a quick follow up to that, Colin, um, I think mm -hmm. a while back, because I think you've driven Nano from very much like user needs and business yeah. needs, and you mm -hmm. you focus on that kind of core di digital money um, offering and the problems with that. Um, you, I think your kind of findings and research smart contracts themselves you weren't necessarily seeing a huge amount of need for is that correct or have i misremembered yeah i mean um that that's another thing that people ask um again we just focus on the currency aspect of it but smart contracts are kind of a generalized like you can put anything that is a computer program into the blockchain um i i don't see those particularly useful and it does account for an enormous section of all the cryptocurrencies out there um, I, I think the currency aspect is one of the few things that actually needs this technology arrangement of how blockchain works. It, it really, really needs it in order to get de decentralization and blah, blah, blah. Not many other things actually need that. Um, so it's, definitely, it's definitely kind of a, a, you know, blockchain is this buzzword that everyone thinks it's going to be a fix or solution to every business's problem. And on the smart contracts kind of, I think, aspect, if you look at the art world or anything like that, and you're going to put picture or art on the blockchain to, to track its movement and or sell um, kind of you know history. Now, when it when it comes into human nature and the legal system, that's when smart contracts really don't have a footing. So, just say something got taken to court and ownership over um, a lost piece of art that was already on um, a ledger, uh, you know. Um, on the blockchain then and a decision was made by a judge now no matter what that decision is the ledger cannot be changed it's immutable and so you will have a um, a wrong kind of input into that ledger forevermore and so that's where I think smart contracts really haven't taken in human nature and actually the reality of the world and how we how the world works currently so the next one is, uh, what, are the, what are your thoughts on the environmental impact of crypto mining? Uh, is it worth the energy costs? Obviously, Elon yeah. Musk uh, <laughs> <laughs> recently well, I, crashed I think the market, didn't it's, he? It's, I mean, Bitcoin has been an amazing vehicle you know, towards innovation that we've seen today. I think it is mad that we are pushing forward a new technology that has such a negative effect on sustainability and climate change. Um, that's, I, uh, I, I just, I find it mad that we're still trying to, some people are convincing themselves, you know, whether it's using renewable energy. Now let's look at innovation and let's look at how we could actually remove mining completely. It's been proven to be unnecessary with nano. And so why does it have to be a requirement of other coins and therefore more energy consumption across the globe? Um, and therefore an unequal, also through energy consumption comes an unequal power over networks or decentralization. Look at you know the Chinese 
um, uh, crypto mining farms. There's what three huge entities, and that's it. You know, so again, it doesn't feed into the ethos of what cryptocurrency was designed to achieve. Yeah, I I think in my mind that that was the second biggest thing um, that made me embark on Nano in the first place um, was I wanted to make some improvements in the digital currency. Fine, I also was thinking that we we can't have the future of world currency based on something that is effectively going to burn the world down while it's operating it's just not possible like if it if it succeeded we wouldn't like the world um but i thought it was not going to succeed because people are just not going to tolerate it the world is becoming increasingly environmentally aware um they want to reduce these types of wastages um and i, I just think they were not going to do it so the real question was can you get can you get the same effect of what you wanted, which is decentralized peer-to-peer -peer currency um, with simply a different technology that doesn't require um, the, that mining? And Nano is, is that. It's the you know, stats do change, but I think um, one Bitcoin transaction is 6 million uh, Nano transactions um, when it comes to energy consumption. So do you think this is just like an early stage then, all the mining? Do you think maybe in 50 we years? Are, yeah, we're, I think this is embryonic stage of, of yeah. innovation. And I think, you know, when everyone goes, when's adoption? Why aren't you doing this? It's like, we, this hasn't even begun. And I really do yeah. believe that. Um, we, Bitcoin, even Nano, you know, no, we haven't started yet. To, and this is such a world changing opportunity. Um, and I think there's going to be plenty more innovation coming in the future. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that, that flows on quite nicely to the next one, which is when do you see adoption happening in crypto and, and what are the major blockers to it? So I guess apart from, uh, yeah, the environmental impact. Yeah, I think it really also, what is adoption? You know, and that's what is yeah. I'm trying to slightly kind of get to terms with when we see it said consistently across all kind of platforms when it comes to cryptocurrency and it's used as a judge of success. Now, adoption to some people could be, let's slap on as many partnership stickers to our website as possible. These people know about this token or currency. In our minds, that's not adoption. We work closely with companies and we've been sat on two very, very large ones for a while now in actually fixing what is their problem? How can Nano actually make a change for them? And that to us is adoption and we will release them and announce them soon enough. And they are real world use cases that Nano can only fix. So if you are restricted with credit card purchases or anything like that in your business, it is actually fixing a real world problem. And so therefore, I think a lot of the adoption chat is actually masked it's, it is a mask for the speculative markets and people go, there is no adoption here. And actually that is just used as FUD um, and it's used as a, um, a mask of and a level of success that I don't think exists in the crypto space yet. I don't, I haven't seen a working actual use case of a cryptocurrency fixing a real world problem that has been proven. I mean, that goes back to our slide the one where it said the entire cryptocurrency market accounts for one percent of global currency usage so there, there is no such thing as a cryptocurrency that's adopted none of them are yep. quite frankly we've got a long way to go and we are yep. in absolutely you know we absolutely understand that um but it's showing that nano can fix something and actually okay. make a difference yeah it, this is one that i think strikes fear into a lot of investors um should it be regulated should crypto be regulated yeah, in my, in my opinion, I, I think to a certain extent, um, yes, I, and I think the larger issue is that it will be um, just because that, that's how things go. Uh, but I think it is important for people to remember people, people think of, um, you know, regulating things in terms of their local regu regulations, because that's how this uh, usually goes. If this is a global currency, who are going to regulate the global currency? Is that the EU? Is that the US? You know, is it China? Who, who, who gets to decide that? As, as an American who has moved over into uh, Europe and the UK, I realize how intrusive the American banking system is um, around the world. Do we want to recreate that? So everything that we've done in Nano has been to minimize the amount of things that can be manipulated in the system by anyone, including ourselves, yeah. um, in order to, to minimize that. Now, just ask, ask a quick um, related one. Um, what, what are your views on is it El Salvador recently? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's it's a, a great step in the right direction. I think what when it comes to actually the fundamental of what they've put in place of the mechanism, it I think there's a lot of improvement that could be made. It is a an IOU in a sense, and again, Bitcoin with its volatility and with its fees, I don't believe that there is a currency. And so therefore, I think there's a lot of work to be done, but I think it's a great step and a great step in the right direction. I think there's a lot of honing of how that can could work on a governmental level, definitely. And just for just for the others in the chat. Uh, I, I can jump on that. On that. So I, I think, in my opinion, I think it was a little bit premature. I, I think that's something that would be good down the road. The issue with declaring something legal tender is that that elevates it um, status and legal wise in your country. What legal tender means is that if somebody owes you a debt and somebody gives you legal tender, they cannot refuse it. And what they've just done is basically saying, if I go to a store and I tell them I want to pay in Bitcoin, they have to accept Bitcoin. And I think that might be premature, especially probably in El Salvador. So while it is something, you know, it's, it's a goal, I, I, I think maybe it was a little too soon. I don't know. We'll see. I think that's a really good way of putting it. I think the infrastructure, I mean, we struggle, not struggle, but we find it frustrating. Um, I think a lot of the crypto infrastructure um, that is available and that for instance, you know, with Nano's feeless nature, you then have services or exchanges that charge exponential fees and have huge delays, and it really detracts from the technology that we've tried to create for people. Again, when it comes to infrastructure of, you know, El Salvador saying that, you know, Bitcoin can be legal tender, I haven't seen a solidified, you know, infrastructure that actually benefits the people on the ground and not actually the government trying to be an Elon Musk Tesla company with storing their own Bitcoin and doing their own market speculation, but legally. Awesome. Um, this person says, I'm interested in other uses of blockchain. Do you think it has value in other sectors? That's Very awesome. wide question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe answered it a little bit before, but I think currency truly is the only real native use of um, blockchain. But Colin, I'll let you answer. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't mean to be a pessimist that I, I think I'm probably one of the most open-minded, like inventive. If you give me an idea, I'll consider it. I, I've looked around everywhere. I have not found something that blockchain fixes better than existing cloud infrastructure, Azure, you know, just web services. Like it, it has to be a competitive advantage. It has to cost less or solve a problem better. And I think it's worse at both of them. In, in every single way, except for currency. Is, is crypto to blame for the rise in ransomware? That's an interesting question. That is an interesting question. Um, regrettably, I think it, it might be um, because it, it, the same advantage that it gives people and the ability for me to send money anywhere in the world, it gives people the ability to take money to anywhere in the world um, through ransomware. So, you I know, think- not every new technology is like, everything is positive on it. You have to take, you have to look at the holistic view and say on the whole, you know, 1 billion people are helped out in this way. And also ransomware got a little bit worse, yeah. but you know. I think that's also, you know, what cryptocurrency and the markets were able to create was true accessibility into trading um, on an individual basis. And that just wasn't um, available, you know, 15 years ago, you, anyone and everyone could not trade on their stock markets or, you know, be a part of a, you know, an FX trade. Whereas what cryptocurrency did do was enable that to be opened up to everyone. Now, through that, it means that lots of people who have never played the markets or been in markets or been using a financial instrument haven't had maybe the education around the risks and liability or you know how the security and your own personal security should work. And therefore that has then obviously snowballed into people taking advantage of that lack of education around financial instruments. Awesome, I think that's well summed up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the end of uh, the questions. Um, got a little bit of time to open up to the floor yeah. if anyone's uh, got anything buzzing away. Dive in. <laughs> I've got one. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't got any fees on your transactions, there are no fees for a wallet, then who's paying for the server farms and for your brilliant minds to be kind of working on this? How are you making kind of money to live and money? So, to- 
Yeah, I mean, great question. So when we closed the faucet, our distribution, we kept 5% of the supply, and actually that equated to $700,000, that's it, in nano. And we are nearly four years later, and we have around two, nearly three mil um, uh, dollars in nano. And that's never taking a profit in, that's never taking any revenue in. We are incredibly streamlined. We are just a very, very hard working team of around 10 people. Um, and so we are all underpaid and overworked. Um, but we all do it because we really believe that actually what we're doing will change the world in a tangible way. Um, yeah, I mean, so that's how we're paid. Um, with how kind of our company works, I think we probably are, we pay payroll, <laughs> we have hot desks and, and that's it. You know, we, we pay for our servers, but they are minimal. Um, we only, um, I think we've got about seven representatives in our network and the rest are all community run. And so individuals around the world set up their own nodes and enough people have delegated their weight, the nano weight to that node and that's how it's become a representative. Um, and so that's all community, that's all just individuals or businesses. And our goal eventually is to have larger businesses and commercial entities to actually run their own nodes. And that's beginning to happen right now, which is really exciting to everyone securing the network. I've got one for George. Um, yes. Probably got one of the thickest skins. Um, I must know. So, being a woman in tech, but you know, in particular crypto, um, how have you found that? It's <laughs> are you coming to turn? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. Um, I can definitely say that. I mean, when I joined Nano, um, I think it was well, I was the only woman, but um, in the team of 12, but really actually it was just the wider space, the, the acceptance of anonymity in on the internet, and then you mix that with finance, and you get a really beautiful um, uh, coordination, I guess, of people um, that don't have any accountability on the internet. I've definitely struggled, for sure, um, and I my kind of, what I really want to achieve is to make sure that no one else in this space has has to go through what I've been through. Um, I think there's a lot of insecurity online, and I think that is a, a huge vehicle towards how others treat some. So kind of moving forward, you know, being a, a director and having risen up kind of through the ranks of Nano, the support of a lot of the community members, and now we are nearly a 50-50% gender team, which is great in this space, and then we really want to basically shine a light on women we are here, and it's the visibility issue. I was just going to say, if I can just add to that, it's not limited to crypto at all. I think it's it's still, uh, in fact, I was talking to someone about it today, you know, working from home. Um, it seems like women have become ever more invisible. Yeah. Especially okay. in an environment where people don't have cameras on um, and things like that. And um, it's certainly no easier trying to get heard yeah. um, in this new ways of working. I really want to find some more female developers. We've never, we've had one female CV when we have got hundreds of thousands in for every job that we've ever put out. And that shows it all comes down to schooling, education, being empowered as a young girl to know that the science is an applicable career for you. Technology, you don't also have to be a, a tech head to, to be a part of a technology company or even run one you know there are so many variants um, of skills and careers that are available in sectors and I think women are so overlooked um, I mean how can we create a global currency if we're if we're not even looking at half the world that's madness it's literally half the world yeah um, and yet it's really accepted especially in the crypto world and especially in the incumbent financial world um, it's systemic in in you know multitude of, of industries, but it's up to us and all of us, men and women, to change that, and that starts on the ground. Oh. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that wraps everything up. Thank you so much for the talk. Uh, that was it, was it was so interesting. I think everyone loved it. Um, yeah, we'd love to have you back again when. Yeah. Uh, but Love to come back, definitely. I mean, I think this is one of our, uh, it's been one of the most enjoyable kind of talks and presentations and relaxed, yeah. and interested questions. And so just a huge thank you to all of you. Nano.org is our website. Um, you'll find all our kind of social platforms there. Um, Reddit is a very, very engaged community for us. Um, so you'll see lots of innovative ideas if you're interested. Um, but please feel free to email us if you've got any further questions.